having trouble winning games in Madden 24? Help me! Help me! In this video, I will show you guys five keys to success on offense and defense Break yourself, fool. that will win you more games. So if you want to see what I'm doing to get results like this, stick around after the intro. For the fastest, cheapest, most reliable coins on the market, check out my coin sponsor, MMOXP.com, and use discount code MONEYSHOT to get 5% off your order. Link in the description below. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys the five keys to success on offense and defense that will win you more games than Madden 24. But before I do, if you guys are enjoying the content and want to see more, please make sure to be a subscriber, hit the like button, and let me know in the comment section as it really helps out the channel. My first key to success is to be more consistent in your approach by using the same things and mastering them. Things like the same playbooks, the same offense and defensive formations in those playbooks, the same plays, and even the same teams. I always go back to this Bruce Lee quote where he said, I don't fear a man who practices 10,000 thousand kicks one time i fear the man who practices one kick ten thousand times so pick a system and stick to it the team that i use is always pretty much the eagles mostly because i'm an eagles fan but also because they are good and i've learned a lot of this team's limitations the playbooks that i'm using right now are my denver broncos offensive and las vegas raiders defensive ebooks if you guys want to learn more about these or any of my ebooks you can download them instantly simply by clicking the links in the description or the top pinned comment sticking to a system like this allows you to fully flush it out and find every possible advantage while trying to make it perfect Advantages like personnel, where the Eagles have several hidden gems most people probably don't even know about. For example, you may think that the Eagles' best tight end is Dallas Goddard because he is the highest rated, but if I could only have one tight end on this team, it would be Albert Aquabunum because he is much faster, but he's not even on the depth chart, meaning that most people that play with this team probably won't even get to use him. But I always make sure to put him at the right spot on my offense, which brings me to my next key to victory, and that is speed is king in Madden. Overall ratings mean nothing if they're not fast, so maximize everything you do by putting speed in the right places, because speed does you no good sitting on the bench. The best examples of this for the Eagles is to use Albert Akwe Boonham, like I mentioned earlier, who is my second tight end and fullback. Quez Watkins at receiver, who is also my return man since he has a 97 speed. On defense, I use linebackers like N'Kobe Dean, Sean Bradley, and Nolan Smith, and my secondary, I load up with the fastest players possible like Keely Ringo and Isaiah Rogers who both have 94 speed. If you ever find yourself getting burned in the secondary, check the speed rating of your starters as they should all be at least close to 90 speed or they shouldn't be playing in deep coverage. And this brings me to my next tip which is to never underestimate your opponent for all the reasons I just mentioned. Ratings don't matter, speed matters. And just because the Bears suck in real life, it doesn't mean that they do in Madden. When I started this game and I saw the Bears as my opponent, I almost backed out. As I'm recording this for YouTube videos and I thought there was no way this game would be competitive enough for me to use in a video since the team is so bad. So I was already overlooking them, which is exactly what happens in real life when teams like the Cardinals knock off teams like the Cowboys. It's called a trap game, so respect every opponent as a real threat. The offense that I'm using today is my gun wing flex offset. If you want to see more about this offense specifically, I already made a full breakdown of this in another video, so I will leave a link in the description as well as on screen at the end of this video. The reason I use this offense is because I designed it in a way that I can really use it all game, no matter what defense my opponent is in. And that's because the key to a good offense is flexibility. You have to take what a defense gives you. For example, this offense has run plays to all three areas of the field, left, right, and center if I choose, and it also has short, intermediate, and deep passing plays all over the field, which is not something that every offense has. You might think that you can always change formations if you want to run or pass, but this will often make you more predictable, as most people like to pass from shotgun looks and run from under center, making it much easier to guess what they're going to do as the game wears on. Which brings me to my next key to success in Madden, and that is predictability, as most games are won and lost based on who can make their opponent more predictable first. So I will want to remain unpredictable on offense while trying to make my opponent predictable on defense. My next tip is to read a defense on every single play play to the best of your ability and this will help you to be more flexible on offense. If you don't know how to read a defense, I made a video about this as well and I once again have a link in the description and at the end of the video. But if you can't read a defense yet, you can always read spacing. On the next play, my opponent gets me to a third and two. So it looks like he presses the entire defense to get closer to defend that two yards, forgetting that his real goal is to defend the end zone. As I see that his cornerback is out of position from his adjustments, so I don't even have to know what defense he's in to set up a one play touchdown for it. Break yourself, fool! And if I was too blinded by the situation of trying to pick up those two yards, I never would have saw this opportunity. 
On defense, I'm going to use the exact same system. I'm going to simplify my system by mostly running one or two defenses the entire game. And I'm going to run the exact same plays every game. I run the exact same coaching adjustments, and I will make the exact same substitutions. If you want to know more about the defense and coaching adjustments that I'm using in this video, I'll once again have a link in the description for more details. On the first couple of plays, though, I don't even have time to set these things up, as you only have like 15 seconds to get all these adjustments in before your opponent calls a play. Sometimes I call a timeout, but like I said, I was overlooking this opponent, so I didn't do that. And my opponent breaks off a big run before I even gets to make my substitutions on defense to tie the game. Damn it! I'm using the same offense when I get the ball back, but I read the defense this time and see that my opponents come out in a much smaller formation. So whether I want to run or pass is irrelevant, as I'm going to stay flexible and take what the defense is giving me one more time. Then I'm going to run hurry up to keep him in it and do it again. And now he's trapped in this look, but I still don't want to get predictable, as he closes up the defensive line letting me know that he is worried about these run plays, only now he comes out in a much larger and slower defense defense to stop the run. Psych! So now I'm going to take what the defense gives me and become a passer. A bad accuracy throw cost me a touchdown on the next play to get me into a fourth and five, but field goals lose games, so I decide to go for it. I want to run double drags, as that'll probably make it the easiest to pick up the first down, but when I come to the line, I see that he's pressing his defense in the short yard situation once again. So I could force the drag, but I just fade the X receiver once again, and we have another easy touchdown because I wasn't blinded by the situation. Do it! On defense, I finally get to finish my setup by making my defensive substitutions and by putting speed in the right places, because speed is king on both sides of the ball. This box safety here is going to blitz most of the game, so I'll put the fastest cornerback that I have here with the lowest coverage rating in Keely Ringo to chase the quarterback around with his 94 speed. After that, I run a lot of man zero blitzes, so I'm going to put my best coverage corners in Isaiah Rogers and Avante Maddox in these safety spots, then put my best and fastest safeties at these linebacker spots to maximize his defense to fit this scheme. But doing this only works if he's a passer, as I have to remain flexible with my personnel setup since this can get me weak box very easily if he's too run heavy. And you can see how effective it is as we get him to a third and long before he decides to run, weak boxing my much smaller defense for another long score. So I'll have to remain flexible in the next drive and make substitutions again based on what my opponent is doing. God damn it! On offense, I try to take what the defense gives me in the form of a one play touchdown that I recently put out in gameplay, yeah. but I get another poorly thrown ball, ultimately ending the drive. And even though I want to keep the ball, I have to remain flexible even in these situations and punt the ball away as I have confidence in my defense. Since he has proven so much success running, instead of making Making adjustments to my big nickel over G personnel, I'm just going to be flexible to a much larger defense and come out in my 3 4 odd scheme. And you can see we're already having much different results, only this time he switches to a passer on the next play as he's taking what the defense is giving him in the form of a speed advantage against all these linebackers. So once again, I'm going to have to go back to the drawing board on the very next drive. And fuck this guy! Back on offense, the defense that he was using on the last drive was cover for match. If you saw my last video about this offense, you might have noticed that the cover four gave me a lot of problems because I forgot my own setup against this defense. He might have even seen that video as he has been running a lot of my defenses throughout this entire game. So after that game, I went back to the lab and realized that this play is a natural cover for one play touchdown with no adjustments at all. And all the adjustments that I was making was just messing that up as this guy gets completely forgotten in coverage right over the middle of the field. So we take what the defense gives us one more time for an easy touchdown. Fuck you! Back on defense, we are now going to be flexible by switching back and forth from the three for odd to the big nickel over G by letting our opponent decide for us based on what offensive personnel package he comes out in. If he comes out in three wide or more, I'm going to run the big nickel over G. If he comes out in two tight ends or more, I'm going to come out in the 3-4 odd. This is also why I said it's best to stay in one offense all game, because now he is more predictable based off of the formation that he chooses. And now we're having more success and slowing this offense down, as we almost got an interception on the very next play. Yeah. Before he gets inside the red zone, and we get a sack ending the drive, and holding him to a field goal for the first time in this game. He gets the ball at the beginning of the second half as well, and we desperately need a stop, as we force a 4th and 4 from his side of the field. And if he was being more flexible like me, he would have punted. How about no? As I start to drive close to field goal range before I go through the process of taking what the defense gets me to get all the way down to the 5. From here I want to run the ball but he is clearly blitzing as he shuts me down and holds me to a field goal attempt that I uncharacteristically miss. What? And now this game looks like I'm going to lose to the Bears. As he has a lead and is slowly milking the clock against me, game situations can make your opponent more predictable as my opponent is clearly trying to run the clock. So we send a couple of extra run blitzes and shut him down inside of his own territory once again. Woo! before he decides to go for it one more time. Bring that ass here, boy. And his lack of flexibility might cost him the game. So now with the game almost over, the goal is clear. I'm going to do the same thing my opponent was just trying to do, play the clock game. 
but since he has only seen me run one offense the entire game, I'm going to make my offense even more unpredictable by changing formations entirely to an offense that he hasn't seen yet in a new scheme that I haven't even put out on my channel yet from the iPhone Close. Since I am already in field goal range, I know that a tie is in the bag, but I still want to read the defense and stay unpredictable. And even though he probably knows that I'm going to run, he doesn't know where. So on the first play, I motion across the receiver to set up future plays before running right up the middle. On the next play, I make the same motion for better blocking to the outside, which he never saw coming. He changes his defense on the next play so he can take away those outside run lanes, but he has no second level linebacker, so I'm just going to take what the defense gives me and try to get past that first level where the defense is weakest, which is what I do in the next two plays for the first down. He bulks up big time on the next play to stop that, so I'm going to make a motion on the next play to read the defense once again by watching to see if his cornerback follows this receiver across the field. If he did, there would be nothing out here to stop my stretch run, but since he didn't, it means he's in a zone. So I motion him back, flip the play, and then motion across the receiver one more time to have a blocking advantage on the two receiver side. And now since I ran on every single play and he has run man or cover four defense every single time to match, I just have to wait for the clock to click down before calling the double outs as this speed out route beats both of them. And since he's never seen this before, he has no idea that it's coming leaving him no time on the clock to even try to make a comeback. So that's that's the video. If you guys want to see more from any of the offenses or defenses that I was using in today's video, I'll once again have them popping up on screen. So just click the links. And other than that, thanks for watching, man. My shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like eBooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.